Hi everyone, this is Repeater64, and welcome back to another Chestcraft devlog. As always, I'd recommend taking a look at the previous videos in the series if you haven't already, so you can see what I've done so far. And if you're enjoying the series, and interested to see where Chestcraft goes, I'd really appreciate it if you can subscribe. This video I've added ores, smelting, armour, and death. Let's take a look at the ores first. We don't have proper terrain generation yet, so these won't currently generate underground, but I've placed a few of each type down so I can demonstrate. They all have the correct loot tables, the correct breaking speed, and some require different levels of pickaxe to mine. I can mine them all with an iron pickaxe, and if I go ahead and start breaking these, you'll see I get the actual ore block itself from iron and from gold, like I would in normal Minecraft, but from the other ores I get the item. Uh, and as you see, Lapis gives me more than just one Lapis Lazuli, because that's how Lapis normally works. And same with Redstone. And I have all the loot tables set up correctly so that when I do add enchantments like Fortune and Silk Touch, everything will work as it should. Now that I've got some ores, I'll show you the smelting system. I can craft up a furnace like normal with 8 cobblestone, place it down, open it up, and you'll see the furnace menu. So this here is the fuel slot, this is the input slot, and this is the result slot. I'm going to put some uh, oak planks in as fuel and use them to smelt some iron ore. This arrow item here represents how far the current item is from being smelted. So if I hover over it, you can see it's got kind of a progress bar as well as the item number itself showing the progress. And it goes from 1 to 10, and when it reaches 10, an iron ingot is produced. This furnace item represents how much of the current fuel item is left before a new fuel item is going to be consumed. So it's kind of like the fire graphic in normal Minecraft. And you see when it runs out, the number of fuel items jumps down by one. I can also close the furnace and it will continue smelting. And if I hover the item, it'll tell me that it's smelting. Much like how in normal Minecraft, you'd be able to see the fire effect on the front of a furnace. And of course, I can take the iron ingots out when they're done. With the valuables we've got from mining and smelting the ores, you can craft all the different types of tools and armour. There's no need for me to show you absolutely every crafting recipe, but I'll make an iron helmet, gold chest plate, diamond leggings, and some leather boots. Armour can be equipped by shift right clicking on it, which makes the sound and puts it on me. Only the chest plate is immediately visible, as you can see it's replaced the armour stand below my head, but I can see my other armour pieces by opening up my 2x2 two two crafting grid, which now shows the armour you're wearing. You can also dequip armour from here. And it's worth noting that you can actually swap armour pieces very easily. If you try and equip an armour piece when there's already one on you, it will swap. Like now I can swap between an iron chest plate and a gold chest plate. If I log on with another account, I can instantly see the chest plate, but I can also see the other armour pieces by hovering it over. Here you can see it tells me that the helmet is iron, the chest plate is gold, the leggings are diamond, and the boots are leather. I've also implemented the correct damage reduction formulas, so if I start punching this guy, then you'll see he actually takes quite a lot less damage than if I punch the naked player. Oh, I'm using my sword. <laughs> okay, well, if I just punch them, you can see they take 0.5 damage each time, but if I punch the armoured player, they only take about 0.2. That brings us on to the final feature for today, which is death. If I get my sword back out again and attack this player more fatally, then you'll see they disappear from the world, I get their items, they had 64 cobblestone, and they see a death screen. The death screen is pretty red to give them an idea of what's just happened to them, and it also has this little window in the middle of the screen so they can actually see what's happening in the world in the place where they died. Now they can choose to respawn with this button, or rage quit with this button. So if I click quit, then it closes me out of the chest, and opening the chest back up will put me back into the death screen. Now I can hit respawn, and it will put me just straight back at the world spawn point. Alright, that is it for this episode. I'm not quite sure what the next thing to add will be, so if you have any ideas or suggestions then let me know down in the comments, or you can tell me any ideas that you have in general for this project. But remember that the end goal is to recreate the whole of Minecraft inside this chest. Subscribe to keep up to date with new videos, and I'll see you next time.